Alrighty guys, good morning to you. We're live. I invite you to come join me. Today is the sixth day of April 2020. On this gloomy Monday morning, I invite you to come join me and it is about 42 minutes after 10 a.m. I want to look at um, some scripture today in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 and I want to talk um, to you just a little bit on the subject of now is the day of salvation morning Kent morning Jennifer Johnny Anderson there I freed of Walters but just I want to I was <laughs> it's kind of funny because I was doing this study this morning and and I thought, well, you know, I kind of wanted to talk more on the topic of um, of the Holy Week and Jesus being going into the temple and cleansing the temple, and and I had a, a little devotion for that. But maybe we'll talk about that later on, um, maybe during my walk today or something, if it's not raining or something. But we might get to it later. But I feel like this is more pressing in my heart. Um, to talk about it says now is the day of salvation now right now today and as I was thinking of that and thought about well maybe I can go live tonight and give this devotion and I thought no tonight might be too late this message that I want to give you is for now for this moment and look in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 um, for he saith I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured or helped thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Folks, listen, I want you to understand, I know we have good intentions, and I know that, you know, a lot of people, oh, you know, I'm too young or I've got so much going on when this happens and when this stop happens, happening, you know. And I've heard so many excuses over the years of why people don't surrender their lives to the Lord. And they put it off. And sadly, it's just too late for them. You know, and, you know, I'm not playing judge and, and I don't know how people's conditions and what their heart's condition is when they leave this life. Um, only God and that person knows. But I tell you what, it's a dangerous thing to put off repenting, put off um, reject, you know, accepting the Lord. Um, and there's many of scriptures that we can look at through the Word of God that teaches us, you know, that we need to um, repent. Um, I, I can sit here all morning and give you verse after verse. I'm not going to be able to do that. But let me give you a few examples. In Mark chapter 6, verse 12, it says, And they went out and they preached that men should repent. Look in Luke 24, 47. Um, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name of among all nations, in his name, among all nations. You know, we need to go out and teach repentance in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And then in Acts um, 17, verse 30, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In other words, ignorance is not going to be bliss. We cannot go and say, oh, Lord, I did not know. You know, And that's what the word ignorance means. It's not a derogatory um, word. It just means unknown, unlearned. And, you know, a lot of times people use that in excuse, I didn't know, I didn't know. But you know what? There are, you, you don't have that excuse anymore. We know. We know to repent. God's Word teaches us we need to repent. We need to turn away. And that's the word repent simply means to change your mind, to turn away from. You know, Scripture teaches us to repent, turn to God, 
change your mind from living in sin and make up your mind that you're going to live for God. Folks, listen, that's what the word repentance means. And and the scripture I just read to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. We cannot put it off. We cannot wait any longer. Folks, we're not guaranteed another moment in this life. You know, used to we say we, we're not guaranteed another day. But let's just be, you know, clear. We're not guaranteed another second. We're not guaranteed another moment. There have been people who's dropped dead right where they stood, you know, in a moment. Folks, we're not guaranteed another second. Now is the accepted time. Today, right now, is the day of salvation. And, you know, I study this and I'm not going to be able to give you everything that I've studied for the sake of time but you know just thinking about some things here you know um, the, those that refuse to repent and turn to Christ in faith you know will suffer a, a penalty because of rejecting Jesus Christ that's why it is so you know and, and I'm so adamant about repenting and turning from your sinful ways, accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, because I want you to understand that if we leave this world lost, if we reject Jesus Christ, and we leave this world as a sinner, you know, we're not going to close our eyes in death, and that's the end of it. You know, I think a lot of people think that, you know, well, if I don't accept Jesus Christ, I'll never know it because when I die, I'm just dead. You know, you've got a soul that is going to live eternally somewhere. Whether in heaven with the Lord, if you repent of your sins, accept Jesus as your Savior, or in an eternal death in the lake of fire. Those are not my words. That's the words in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. You know, that um, it, the, t teaches us that there is a lake of fire that we will be cast into if we reject Jesus Christ. So there are consequences to our decision. There are consequences in, you know, accepting Christ. And I know this is never a popular devotion. Nobody likes to hear that because a lot of times the reason why people don't want to repent, people don't want to accept Christ as their Savior, um, is number one, they feel like, um, well, a loving God is never going to send me to a devil's hell. Number two, you know, they believe that some people just does not believe that there is a hell. They don't even believe that a place such as that exists. And sadly, number three, probably above everything else, is they think they have plenty of time. I'll repent later. I'll do it later. I'll accept Christ later. And for some people, this later never comes. You know, and the Bible gives you several um, reasons why people, you know, should not delay as if I didn't give you enough right there you know that if we leave this world lost if we leave this world without accepting Christ as our Savior that there is a judgment uh, and a lake of fire that waits for us and folks that place is eternal people who dies now the Bible teaches goes to a devil's hell, but at the end of time in judgment, that death and hell will give up their dead and they'll stand in judgment and then they'll be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And that place is eternal. But if you go in and you look at the verse of scripture I gave you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, um, this was Paul and he's actually just quoting from Isaiah 49, verse 8, Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage. And folks, listen, um, I'm thankful that when you go into the New Testament, you know, it's not contradicting the Old Testament. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. Um, you know, and I'm glad that, you know, when you read the New Testament, Paul, you know, what he was saying, he was grabbing from the Old Testament scripture, you know, just to reiterate his thoughts. You know, listen, it's important for us to repent of our sins. According to John chapter 16, verse 8, um, repentance should take place as soon as God or the Holy Spirit 
convicts us of our sins. That's another thing that a lot of people um, find, you know, that think is true, that you can come to God anytime you want to, that you can be saved anytime you want to. Listen, if the Holy Spirit is not drawing you, we can't be saved. That's why I try to tell people, you know, when the rapture occurs, and people don't believe in the rapture. Well, you know, you don't have to believe in it if you don't want to. You know, you can stay here as long as you want. But I, I'm planning on leaving when the Lord comes back. But here's the thing. You know, if the Holy Spirit is lifted up after the rapture, how can we be drawn to God? How can we be drawn to God if the Holy Spirit isn't here to draw us? So, you know, we need to look in John chapter 16, verse 8. Repentance should take place as soon as the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. Um, you know, there is a convicting power from the God, Holy Ghost, you know, that will draw us to repent. In other words, today is the day of salvation. Look in um, Psalms 95. I'm not going to read it to you, but verses 7 and 8. It says, you know, if only you would hear his voice and do not harden your hearts. We can have salvation. But how sad is it that people will harden their hearts against God? Here's another reason why you should not delay repentance. Look in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, very familiar verse. You know, it is as it appointed unto man once to die, but after that the judgment. You know, we don't have any idea when we're going to leave this world unless you self-inflict and take your own life. And even then, some people has failed even to do that. But, you know, naturally, you don't know, or, you know, something, you may get in your car and, and, and intend to go home and not make it home because you're in a car accident that takes your life. You don't know what's going to take you out of this life. But here's one thing for sure. It is appointed for man to die. And after that, the judgment. We've done devotions and preached on this many of times. Two appointments that we'll never be able to reschedule, that we'll never be able to cancel, and that is death and judgment. But the thing is, is we can be ready when this happens. We don't know when we're going to be called out of this life, but we can be prepared. We can be saved and we can repent of our sins, accept Christ as our Savior, and be prepared when that day happens. And number two, if we're standing before the Lord with the blood of Jesus applied in our heart, then we're prepared for judgment as well. Jesus used a parable um, about the rich fool um, in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 20. And, you know, he shared the thought that, you know, that man, this man had thought he had plenty of time to enjoy life. Thought he, you know, he built barns, tore down barns and built bigger to store everything, you know, and thought he would enjoy all that he had acquired in life. Thought he had all the time in the world to enjoy it. But, you know, the thing of it is, is God had news for him. You know, um, that very night, if you look in verse 20 of Luke 12, it says that your life will be um, required or demanded from you. You know, so we don't have a guarantee of tomorrow don't have the guarantee when we wake up that we'll even see the sunset but we need to be ready we need to repent now we need to turn to Jesus Christ now another reason um, not to delay um, is every and I found this very interesting every time we refuse to repent it seems like a heart grows harder and harder look in Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 and 8 it says wherefore as the Holy Ghost saith today if you will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness harden not your heart when I think of this I, I can't help but to think about Pharaoh and and go into the book of Exodus and, and hear and read where Pharaoh had hardened his heart and you see how that turned out but think every time that you tell God no it seems like it gets a little easier to tell God no the next time. To kick against Him. God will not force you to be saved. I know people say, well, it's not God's will that any man should perish, so therefore God's will is always going to be done, so everybody's going to be saved. I wish that was true. But according to Scripture, there's many places in Scripture that talks about, you know, man mankind going to a devil's hell. You know, no, it's not God's will that any should perish and go to a devil's hell. But God gave man free will to choose. But just because we have free will to choose does not mean that our choices are without consequences. You know, sin won't enter into heaven. And if you have sin in your life, you will not be able to enter into heaven. That's the word of God.
That's scripture. That's Bible. But listen to this. If you think about, you know, every time you say no to God, that your heart hardens. And it's easier to tell God no the next time. You know, this is a, a, a picture of a gradual hardening of the heart. Um, and as or as First Timothy chapter four verse two posts or, or said about it, he said the searing of your conscience. You know that will numb your heart, where things that used to penetrate your heart now, you know, it just bounces off. And folks, this is a dangerous condition to be in. That your your heart is so hardened that you know you don't allow the word of God to pen, penetrate your heart. And the more that you rebel against God, the more you tell God no, the more you reject Him, the hard harder your heart becomes. I was reading as I was studying this, somebody had quoted this. I don't know who actually wrote this, but I thought this was an interesting quote, and, and it says this. The harder a person's heart is, the more force God will have to apply to bring them to repentance. Now think about Pharaoh. And you can read in chapter Exodus chapter 11 or chapter 7 all the way through 11 the account of the plagues that came upon um, Egypt because of Pharaoh's hardened heart. And every time that God had sent Moses and Aaron you know, to Pharaoh... You know, he, the plague's gotten worse and worse because Pharaoh's heart was hardened more and more. And you know the story, and he continued, you know, until finally the last plague, well, it, where every firstborn of all the Egyptians, the Israelites did not lose any children. Folks, listen, why would God punish the very people that he was coming to rescue? So listen, and, and I think it's the very same thing with tribulation and, and the coming of the Lord. People says, oh, I think we'll be here all the way through the coming, you know, through the tribulations, the great tribulation and all that. I don't, you know, because if we're born again and we're saved, you know, God's not going to punish us. You know, he's going to take us out of here, but that's for another devotion. But here's the thing. Pharaoh continued to harden his heart. And even after losing the firstborn, Pharaoh said, told Moses, get your stuff, get all your stuff together, grab your people, everything that belongs to you, and get out of here. And as they were heading out, and they was leaving Egypt, Pharaoh hardened his heart once again. You know what had happened I think Romans chapter 1 verse 28 calls it a reprobate mind. That you can reject God so many times that there's a time where God's going to just quit dealing with you. I don't know when that is. You don't know when that is. The Bible you know, is not clear on that. But there are times where, this, according to Scripture, according to Paul in Romans chapter 1 verse 28, you know, that a person can continually reject God. That finally God will quit dealing with them and give them over to their own ways. That's what reprobate, reprobate mind means. You know, to turn your, you know, to believe a lie and to be damned. You know, that they just reject God so much that God says, well, I'm done dealing with you. What a state of mind that would be in. Could you imagine rejecting God so much and so often? That God just says, you know what, I'm done with you. I hope nobody ever gets to that situation. But sadly, as we read in Romans chapter 1 verse 28, there are people who came to that, that point. Folks, listen, repent. The Bible says today, now is the accepted time. Please don't wait too late. Please don't put it off. Please don't say, well, if my husband or if my wife or if my job or if my kids, you know. Listen, salvation is a personal relationship between you and Jesus. And, and yes, it's great to have your spouse support. It's great to, you know, have your family in. It's great to have everything lined up. But listen, as long as you say, you know, I'm going to wait until things get better in my life before I get saved, I want you to know Satan will make sure that your life isn't better. He will throw things in you know, your way. He'll throw things in your path. 
But if you decide you're going to repent of your sins, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of what's going on in your household, regardless of what's going on in your life, in your heart, in your mind, regardless if you're addicted, regardless of whatever comes your way, if you purpose in your heart, I will serve Jesus Christ right now, today. And Satan's going to back off a little bit. But today, folks, let me encourage you. Accept Christ as your Savior. If you have not done it yet, today, right now, is the accepted time for salvation. Don't put it off. Don't wait another moment. Because you may not have another opportunity. You may be taken out of this world. And what a fearful thing it is to fall into the hands of a living God. In other words, without Jesus Christ as your Savior. We fear death and we fear sickness. But we should fear standing before the Lord without the blood of Jesus in our heart. Now is the day of salvation. Don't wait another second. Folks, if you need somebody to pray with, you can send me a personal or private message. We'll pray. But today is today's salvation. Don't put it off another second. Listen, that's all God for you. Um, like I said, I wanted to kind of um, talk about Holy Week and all that, but I felt like this is something that needs to be said now. Now is the day of salvation. If you haven't yet, accept Christ as your Savior. Repent of your sins. Change your mind. Change your directions. And follow Jesus Christ. All right, guys, listen, that's all God for you. Legends, thanks for watching. Lord willing, we'll be back on tomorrow with another devotion. Guys, have a great day. God bless you.